Okay, I think uh, we have restarted. Mm, there has been a Facebook glitch. However, I want to just get uh, the meeting started. And uh, you're saying we're here to discuss the recent announcement from the Brain Preservation Foundation. So I guess uh, uh, the best way to start is to ask uh, Ken to briefly describe what has been done for us. Okay, how about uh, getting started? Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Ken to start by saying a few words about uh, what has been done and why the recent result announced by the Brain Preservation Foundation is important. Uh, thanks, Julio. Um, uh, thank, thanks for inviting me to this. Um, I, I haven't really prepared anything to, uh, to speak. I was hoping to just uh, kind of sit back and listen to you guys. But um, uh, so the, the, the real result, of course, came out, uh, I think, three or four months ago with the publication by uh, Robert McIntyre and Greg Fahey. Uh, with their aldehyde stabilized cryopreservation uh, paper in the Journal of Cryobiology. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the first scientific publication that has shown that, uh, that the synaptic circuitry of an entire brain can be preserved indefinitely. Uh, I, Essentially, anything that I have done after that by, uh, by verifying the results with electron microscopy or their winning the prize is, uh, is, is inconsequential because the scientific paper that they published is the, is the main thing. I, I, I essentially, uh, if, if I've done anything, it's just to um, uh, up the level of publicity for their scientific paper. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, well, what I think it means is that uh, scientists and the medical community and ethicists and anybody else that was uh, thinking about this issue before had a very easy response, an incredibly, incredibly easy dismissive response uh, to uh, chronicists or anybody else that was uh, considering medical time travel, uh, they would just say, well, it doesn't work. Nobody has shown that it works. I choose to believe that it destroys the brain tissue, and nobody has shown otherwise uh, uh, to any extent that is credible. Uh, this aldehyde-stabilized cryopreservation technique is obviously, to anybody that really looks at the scientific paper, uh, has has reached that level of, of proof. And so now the conversation uh, should be allowed to move forward. Uh, nobody can fall back on that. Uh, you know, Michael Shermer, for example, cannot fall back on the uh, uh, this is your brain on chronics that looks like defrosted strawberries. Uh, the, and and Many of my neuroscience colleagues that I brought this up with also brought, were dismissive from the point of view of, well, you just can't preserve the delicate neural circuitry of a brain, so why are we even 
discussing this. Uh, this uh, result has moved forward that um, uh, the whole discussion, I would hope. Uh, what it has moved forward to might be, well, gee, you had to bring out the big gun of using uh, glutaraldehyde, and doesn't that poison everything? Uh, that is a much better position, I think, to be in, uh, to really say, yes, this is a technique that provably preserves the brain, uh, but there's flaws, if you will, or non, uh, things that are non-ideal about it. Uh, I, I think that that's a much better position to be in than to uh, always be under the question of, uh, well, I assume that the whole thing is being destroyed, and so therefore I'm not going to listen to any other um, uh, uh, points of your argument. Uh, you mentioned uh, Michael Skermer, but don't you think that uh, his uh, recent article about uh, 21st Century Medicine and the Brain Preservation Foundation is uh, surprisingly open to the idea of revival by mind uploading? I'm sorry, I'm sorry who? Uh, Michael Skermer. Uh, don't you think oh, his last article... Uh, is quite uh, open-minded. Uh, d don't I think that he is uh, uh, open-minded about mind uploading? Uh, yes, the last article that he wrote for Scientific American sounds uh, uh, skeptical, yeah. of course, but quite uh, open-minded to me. So I'm, I'm not talking about him right now. I'm talking about him 10 years ago or whenever the, uh, the last time he wrote a Scientific American column for, uh, uh, about chronics. Um, uh, and I'm just using him as an example because he is, uh, well, he was one of the inspirations, if you will, for me uh, putting forward this prize because I, I just was flabbergasted that uh, uh, that, that was still an argument in uh, you know in the in the 21st century. How can there still be debate on whether uh, we can preserve uh, the connectome? Um, and not being able to point him or any of my scientific colleagues to a clear example of that was was just too much for me to bear, uh, which is why I put forward this prize. And I'm just really glad that uh, Greg Fahey and Robert McIntyre were able to pull it off uh, and, and finally show that, that you could preserve a whole brain. Um, the, the real question that I guess I would like to throw out to, uh, to this group or anybody else that's listening is uh, why hasn't this been done without aldehydes? So I am I am perfectly perfectly uh, aware of how um, uh, horrific the idea is of, of of bringing deadly fixatives into the chronics process, uh, but uh, I am just very concerned about why there is no proof for whole brains without the aldehyde process, and my only, my, my only conclusion has to be that there really is horrific damage going on, or nobody knows what the type of damage is that's going on, and that's why there's no scientific papers to point to. You see, uh, in the meantime, can, can I ask you to open the uh, chat window, if you don't have it open already? So you can see all the comments of the others. Oh yeah, okay. I, I uh, uh, right. Uh, well, I will, I will start responding to some of these, I guess. Yeah, I should mention that uh, I think this is the first uh, time for Ken Hayward in Second Life, and he hasn't had uh, the time to learn everything. Most of us here are really old timers. But uh, we should also welcome Ken to Second Life. Huh? Do you have the, the chat window open?
โอเคเออ no everyone can hear you so the best thing is uh, if you read the, the text but uh, answer by voice Max great to see you so um, oh hello Max so let's see uh, I think there's plenty of damage during rewarming I can't point to a specific publication but I've listened to several yeah so I'm I'm not even talking about the rewarming part uh, I I think that so so I, I think that there is a clear, uh, uh, there is one clear point uh, that comes from all of this in, in my mind. Uh, uh, the, the proof that uh, aldehyde stabilized cryopreservation can preserve the connectome uh, uh, shows that this is an incredibly promising uh, road to follow, this road of what has traditionally been called cryonics, and I don't see any reason to change the name. Uh, so cryonics is, uh, is something that uh, should see a renaissance in, uh, in scientific research. And perhaps the next step would be a uh, equally well done scientific paper showing that non-aldehyde cryopreservation can preserve the brain, uh, the brain's ultrastructure uh, to the same level. I'm wondering, there was no such prior publication not involving fixatives. Well, um, I mean, given given the literature, even for um, uh, that has come out of 21st century medicine, uh, the the uh, tissue slices, uh, half a millimeter t uh, thick tissue slices, have. Uh, have been preserved and brought back, and there's a limited amount of ultrastructure uh, uh, studies and functional studies on those uh, on those tissue slices. So the and going straight back to the um, uh, to Mike Darwin's uh, wonderful work on dogs, uh, that was a a you know, beautiful almost publication. Uh, uh, in the scientific record that uh, that showed a good deal of ultrastructure preservation. So there is history. <laughs> what about specific neurons? Uh, yeah, uh, let, uh, uh, let's see. Natasha says, what about specific neurons? Yeah. And I don't know what specific neurons you're talking about. Uh, can I interrupt Neurons you of the one moment? Yes, that I've vitrified and revived. So absolutely. So there is uh, the 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 C. elegans work and and other uh, very small organisms and uh, cells can be vitrified and brought back to life. Uh, uh, that's fantastic. Um, does it say anything about uh, how well a whole human brain can be preserved? A little bit, yes, I think it does. I think that, you know, step by step, and that's what we are all doing in our individual practices, um, that, that two neurons that form um, long-term memory in the C. elegans were uh, substantially safe, uh, maintain their efficacy, were able to survive uh, vitrification and cryopreservation on you know, a number of different methods and function uh, with smoothly. Um, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, this is absolutely important work. Uh, it, 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 it's absolutely important work. Uh, it says something 
tremendously important, as does the hippocampal slice experiments uh, that uh, 21st Century Medicine published in, um, uh, uh, I, I forget the journal off the top of my head, but relatively recently in 2013, I think, uh, that talked about the, uh, uh, the LTP experiments in slice model. Uh, so these are things that the scientific community should uh, absolutely know. Um, uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I try to do what I can to make sure that that is listed prominently on on the Brain Preservation Foundation's website. Um, but uh, uh, it doesn't. None of these addressed the concerns that uh, of a whole brain. Uh, 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 excuse uh, me, Natasha. Do you guys mind? Uh, excuse me, Natasha. Um, uh, do you guys yeah. mind if I interrupt one moment? I want to ask to answer a question from Randall on Facebook. Uh, yes. Uh, whatever you guys uh, uh, write on Facebook, uh, I'm going to see it, and I can rely the question to the speakers. Uh, okay. Sorry for the interruption, Natasha. Go on. I thought you had a couple of Facebook questions that you wanted to? Uh, no, I just had one Facebook uh, question and that was whether uh, I can read the questions that they are asking. So okay. we are now sure that they can interact from Facebook. If somebody asks a question, I will uh, rely the question to you guys. Okay, Natasha, go yeah, on. So, uh, so, so I don't know if I if I answered your your question, Natasha. Uh, oh, oh about... okay. Um, I think it's it's a matter of the 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 biggest issue that we face is whole brain um, functionality and personal identity over time, and that's the most consequential because if you're if you have no memory of who you were prior to cloud preservation, then who you are after it uh, could be considered a different person or there would be therapies and, and uh, different neuropharmacology and different processes to help a person remember. But being that as it may, uh, the, the, going back to the C. elegans in my research, because it doesn't have a brain, then it makes even more emphasis on the individual neurons important. Uh, now, this is not regardless of a whole brain, to be sure. It's just another approach, and we need as many approaches as possible. Just the functionality of a neuron surviving um, the vitrification is crucial uh, because the brain is made up of separate neurons, and no matter what process is used for uh, a radical life extension or preserving the brain or uploading, it's still those neurons that have the information, and connecting those neurons is consequential. So even one or two neurons, as in my research, is extremely viable in this larger picture, no matter how small it may seem. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody would doubt that, but the, uh, whereas we can uh, preserve whole humans at, the, uh, um, uh, at a very early stage in life, um, uh, embryos, uh, that doesn't mean that we can preserve whole humans at a later stage in life. And so uh, the scaling is, uh, is, is, needs to be tackled at some point. It doesn't, it doesn't lessen uh, the research. It, only, um, uh, it just doesn't uh, answer the, the whole question. And that uh, is let me, uh, slight response, although C. elegant is a mature um, adult and has grown through the process from being a baby, uh, L, um, L1 stage baby uh, larva to the adult L4 stage is the whole lifespan of the C. elegant. If you add that to or could do a comparative analysis on the lifespan of a human, that C. elegant would be, oh, I guess about 40, maybe 50 years old. So because C. elegant only has 14 days, it's not... It's, the analogy doesn't quite work because an embryo is an embryo and a C. elegant went through its whole, whole entire lifespan. But it was an interesting analogy, nevertheless. Yeah, I agree. 
I believe uh, uh, Max wants to uh, comment. Huh? Yes, hello everybody. First of all, I haven't used Second Life in several years, so can everybody hear? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, I just wanted to comment on, on, well, one thing for now, several points later on. But I think, you know, Ken's, you can give the idea that there's no pre-existing visual evidence of preservation of brain ultrastructure. And that's really not correct. I mean, if you go to the Alcor Science page, you've got the vitrified brain micrographs that were achieved with uh, locations in the cerebral cortex of a rabbit brain, perfused with M22 vitrification, and that looks pretty good. I mean, there's some pretty good visual evidence there, but that really hasn't got the public terribly excited, so I'm not sure. I mean, this is a great result. These are beautiful images that Robert has created, but I'm not sure it's going to make a profound difference in the way people see things. There's actually quite a lot of existing evidence out there, and in my experience, that's not really what makes the difference with the vast majority of people. Now, it may make it a little bit harder, be a little bit more evidence that makes it harder for people like Michael Shermer to uh, maintain his position, but I'm not sure it's going to have the profound effect that you think it has. Plus, as we've said in our statement, I think this is a bit of a research dead end, although I'd be happy for Robert to show this to be incorrect. I think what might be a more promising approach uh, is to pursue the brain barrier opening technology that was used by Robert, but not created by Robert, it was pre-existing, and which 21st century medicine is continuing to work on. That may allow us to reduce dehydration and therefore to get better visualization of brain ultrastructure preservation. Now the fact that it's been hard to visualize because of the dehydration was, does not mean that it's not, it doesn't mean that that structure has not been preserved. And you know, given these images that we have on that page there, um, we can see that it is being preserved. It's just a lot harder to show than with Robert's approach. So I, I have to really make, make the point too that I really object to, the, to Ken characterizing Cranich's organization as being unethical and irresponsible when we're actually using a workable technology today that can save people's lives given fairly good evidence already. And of course we're going to keep pursuing new approaches and being able to make it more obvious to prove to people that this is working. But the idea that we should go through clinical trials and wait for decades where people are dying and do nothing, I really object to that being characterized as unethical. So there is existing uh, visual evidence. Uh, this is a welcome addition, but I don't think it changes things drastically. And I don't think it should mean it has should have no implication for uh, what we're doing right now. Robert himself has said that this is not something that cryonics organizations should be offering, but I think we have sufficient evidence that we should be offering the services that we do. So, uh, so uh, obviously, I've seen the uh, the images on uh, on the Alcor website. I've seen lots of images from uh, Greg Fahey. Uh, uh, the the criteria was so that it was for me to be able to show this to my neuroscience colleagues and they not laugh and I'm sorry but uh, my neuroscience colleagues uh, were uh, incredibly unimpressed by the uh, by the images that were being shown uh, for the non aldehyde stabilized uh, prior preservation uh, that doesn't mean that there's destruction, uh, but it also means that, one, uh, it doesn't prove to people that are uh, knowledgeable in these things that there isn't destruction. And it, uh, it begs the question of if you want to make the case that that, isn't, uh, that, that, that technique is preserving the, uh, the connectome, uh, put it in a scientific publication and get it published. Uh, this shows that you can get stuff like that published uh, if you have uh, good evidence behind it. So, so you know, again, I, 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 I think it's a mischaracterization to say that, um, that this is just shrinking the brain. It's just dehydration. The, the thing is that it might be just dehydration and it might be covering up a lot more damage than anybody realizes. Well, but wait, why were they unimpressed and where is the, the damage in these micrographs? I mean, this had to be rewarmed, which we don't do right now, so it was doing additional damage, no doubt, by the rewarming and the fixation that's required to obtain these images. So, 
why why exactly were they unimpressed? It's kind of a little bit vague to uh, respond so, to. So, so nobody would be impressed with the uh, with the aldehyde stabilized cryopreserved uh, samples either, uh, on the basis of does it look biological? Uh, because it doesn't. There's a uh, uh, there's 